remaining open to the unpredictable will of God. The legacy of St. Anthony of Padua, named patron of the custody in 1928. On Monday, June 13th, the friars celebrated his feast at St. Saviour's in Jerusalem. Following the official ritual, the new custos of the Holy Land, Father Francesco Paton, entered solemnly into Jaffa, site of important biblical events and an historic place for the Franciscans. The Mother of Grace concert was performed by the choir and orchestra of the Italian Carmelite School in Haifa under the direction of teacher and music director Emile Bishara. A special video on the mission of the Custos of the Holy Land, Father Pierre Battista Pizzaballa, 12 years of encounters, initiatives, and challenges. His memory will never vanish. His name will be blessed forever. The verse that embodies the people's devotion to St. Anthony of Padua is the responsory of the Second Vespers. Monday, June 13th, in the St. Savior Monastery in Jerusalem, the friars celebrated the feast day of the Franciscan saint, patron of the custody of the Holy Land, together with the local and international Christian community. The link between the custody and the saint, who was born in Portugal and died in Padua, Italy, is ancient and unbroken. However, the official appointment of the special patron and protector of the custody dates back to 1929. Ten years earlier, during the Anglo-Turkish War, the friars, along with the European citizens, had been expelled from Palestine. The prayer to St. Anthony obtained for the Franciscans the blessings to stay in the Holy Land. During the homily, the new custos, Brother Francesco Patton, told the saint's story from his early years as an Augustinian. He talked about the sight of the five Franciscan proto-martyrs who convinced St. Anthony to enter the Order of Friars Minor, and also recounted about St. Anthony's meeting with St. Francis. Four images were invoked, the Book of the Word of God, the Baby Jesus, the Lily, and the Bread. St. Antonio St. Anthony is a special saint. He is called the Saint of Miracles because the people who turn to him as an intercessor are heard. Do not just admire him, Father Patton added, but imitate him. The Church teaches that the saints are our models and friends. Therefore, as models, they embody the Gospel. So let us follow the Gospel. Let us follow Jesus Christ. The festival began on Sunday afternoon with the recitation of Vespers and continued Monday with the celebration of the Eucharist in the presence of representatives of different churches as well as various civil authorities. After the Mass, just like every year, the consecration of the custody to the saint took place in front of his statue and his relic. The recitation of the second Vespers followed in the afternoon. We are told that we are the protagonists of our era. However, the story of St. Anthony and our own story, if we ponder about our own existence, tells us that the protagonist is God. It is important from a personal point of view to remain always open to what God might eventually ask of us, and even though it could seem that he is messing up our life, we need to accept it, because when he makes changes in our life, it is always for our own good in more universal terms. It is important to have the humility to remain inside the events, allowing God to be the one to lead history, because we always learn that when we are the ones wanting to lead history, we cause ruin and misfortune. The Custos of the Holy Land, Brother Francesco Patton, made a solemn entry on Saturday, June 11th, this time in the town of Jaffa, administratively incorporated in Tel Aviv in 1950. The ceremony, which was held together with the commemoration of the local patron, St. Anthony, began with a procession that started at St. Peter's Church. Being a port city, the Franciscans settled here in the 17th century to house pilgrims who sailed into Jerusalem from around the world. 
Located in the Mediterranean coast, Jaffa is one of the oldest cities in the world. With over 4,000 years of history, the biblical texts narrate that the prophet Jonah tried to flee to Tarshish from this port. During the storm, he was then thrown overboard and was swallowed by a big fish that rejected him back onto the beach three days later. The home of Simon the Tanner was also in Jaffa. Peter was staying in that place when he had a vision of a cloth that fell from the sky containing unclean animals and received the order to eat them. After this episode, Peter went to Caesarea Philippi where he baptized Cornelius, the first pagan converted to Christianity. Dopo la visione qui. After this vision, Peter understands that not only the Jews but all people are pure. This was very significant because the church is open to all, to all nations. Even today, here in Jaffa, there are many communities. Every weekend in our church, we have seven masses in seven different languages, and we're able to witness the Catholicity and universality of the church. The procession arrived to the city parish in St. Anthony's Church, where in the outer court the Eucharist was celebrated. This was the first solemn mass presided by Father Patton in the Holy Land. In his homily, the Custos recalled Anthony's story and stressed how God guided him through the unexpected events of life. First of all, we should learn that we are not the ones who take the lead in our lives. It is up to us to be open to the surprises of God and not to offer him resistance. The children and the whole community showed welcoming gestures of tenderness. Today is a significant day because this is my first meeting with our local Christian communities and also because it is great to be able to see these Christian communities and their variety. There are native Christians, but there are also people who come from other countries who are here for business reasons. I think it is important for these people to breathe the atmosphere of the Holy Land, which is very special and intense, very intense. Uh, intensa, molto intensa. One of the customs of the local Christians is to bring their children to be blessed. We promise to dress our children as Saint Anthony, asking his intercession and asking him to protect them. The St. Anthony's Festival is one of the strongest religious traditions of the city that best expresses the beauty and diversity of the local church. One of the characteristics of our parish here in Jaffa is that it is a parish of immigrants. It is very colorful. It is a multi-ethnic parish that tonight wants to venerate our patron, St. Anthony. At the conclusion of the Mass, the Custos greeted the faithful and distributed the traditional bread of St. Anthony among the faithful. O Mother of Grace, O purest word, with your presence you just complete my life. With music, poems, and prayers, children, youth, parents, and teachers of the Italian Carmelite School in Haifa gathered to express their love for the Blessed Virgin in a concert dedicated to her. St. Joseph's Melkite Church in Nazareth was the place chosen to perform the concert on June 9th. More than 70 artists are part of the choir and orchestra that was directed by the teacher Emil Bishara. The group is the result of a project that began a few years ago and that aims to educate through music. The purpose of this choir and this orchestra is to be a message of peace, unity and joy because we believe that music is a language of the heart that can educate the human person. We chose Mary, the mother of grace, as our theme because we believe that Mary is truly present in our lives. Just as she was present in Cana in Galilee with her eyes and heart, always in tune with her neighbor's needs. 
The project develops talents and friendships in the school community, but it also requires commitment and discipline. I'm a graduate from the Carmelite School, so I, I just come to give what I have. We prepared for this concert the whole semester. We had to meet every week, uh, something like this. Uh, only the orchestra at the beginning and then to do also rehearsals with the choir. Many faithful from the parish attended the concert during which several songs were sung, as well as hymns and meditations in Arabic dedicated to the Virgin Mary. In this concert, we combine parts of the Byzantine and Maronite liturgies, and even elements of traditional Western liturgy, with various verses of the Gospel, so that it could foster a spirit of prayer. For Christians who are part of the choir and orchestra, music is a means of expression for their faith and for their own identity. When I pray singing the Our Father and the Hail Mary, I feel that I speak with the Virgin Mary and Jesus, and I feel that they speak to me. I feel that God and Mary, the Mother of Grace, are listening to me. I experience this with simplicity. The human and spiritual growth of children is also important for parents whose children are involved in the project. Music is very important. It connects the children to God even more. It is a stimulus for the faith and for prayer. It helps us to better understand the Christian religion. Guardian of Mount Zion and of the Holy Sepulchre for 12 years is the theme of the special video made as a tribute to Father Pier Battista Pizabala. He himself recounts the challenges and joys of these past 12 years in an interview. Many people ask about my future plans. Like everyone else, I obviously have plans. However, first of all, I am a monk. I am a son of obedience. I have walked in obedience also during my mission as a guardian, but there will come a time when someone else will tell me, just as Jesus said to Peter, where to go, and I know it is for the best. I am getting ready for this step, which in all truth is not easy nor is it simple, in view of the fact that I have been living 25 years here in the Middle East, that is half of my life. I lived here the most significant part of my life. I am 50 years old and I spent 25 years here. After 12 years of service as guardian, which has placed me in a certain context, leaving is not simple. It requires a preparation. I am spiritually preparing for this next step of my life, after which I will be ready to experience the freedom that I will be able and will try to have. <laughs> I remember the Custos being young. This was something that surprised many. I think because of his age. Although his spirit was younger than his age, a sign of maturity. Right now, I have this feeling of losing a big brother. The centennial presence of the Franciscans in the Holy Land and in the sanctuaries, the culture and Christian identity in the Middle East, as well as the ecumenical and interreligious dialogue have always been a challenge. One of the little-known aspects of the custody of the Holy Land is the almost daily and very close, almost intimate relationship with non-Catholic Christian churches. The meeting between Patriarch Bartholomew and Pope Francis was a turning point, or perhaps the end of a process and the beginning of another. 
As I have said in other circumstances, the relations between the different churches have become much more cordial. Although each remains within its jurisdiction, their interaction is more friendly. Father Pier Battista Pizzaballo welcomed the two popes who went on pilgrimage to the Holy Land, Pope Benedict XVI in 2009 and Pope Francis in 2014. He was also the spokesperson for the historic meeting in the Vatican Gardens on June 8, 2014 between Pope Francis and the Patriarch of Constantinople, Bartholomew I, with President of Israel Shimon Peres and Mahmoud Abbas, President of the Palestinian Territories. During the meeting, Jews, Christians, and Muslims prayed together for peace. Challenge with the media. 33 broadcasters around the world transmit Terra Santa news. When I go around the world and people say to me, we watch the Terra Santa news and we have learned about all the things you are accomplishing and now we know who you are, this is of great consolation to me. This is a great reward after so much hard work. The challenges of the difficult situation in Syria. La Syria. Syria today is a deep wound in the Christian life of the Middle East because Syria is the cradle of early Christianity. Syria represents a deep, painful wound for us Franciscans, an atrocious war. I had the opportunity to be there just a few months ago. The country is unrecognizable, totally destroyed. At the question of whether or not to stay in hazardous areas, a shepherd does not abandon his flock, remembers Father Pier Battista Pizzaballa. People do not only need bread to live, sometimes a word of comfort, a hug, or a handshake are more important, especially during adversity. La prima parola che... The first word for Father Pier Battista that comes to mind is thank you. As the custos of the Holy Land for 12 years, he has served with great wisdom, with great ability to govern and to uplift people's spirits, and to also create those bridges in the maintenance of which we are all asked to cooperate. I think Father Pier Battista is a great asset to the custody of the Holy Land, and I hope he continues to be. The entire special video can be found on the Christian Media Center website. Terra Santa News is a production of the Christian Media Center in Jerusalem, Holy Land. For more information about Terra Santa News and the Christian Media Center, please check out our website at the bottom of the screen. You'll also be able to subscribe to our newsletter, to view live video feeds from the Holy Land, as well as visit our Facebook and YouTube pages and follow our Twitter feed. Come visit the website of Terra Santa News.